Congresswoman Green and I are not here to celebrate January 6th. We are not here to obsess about it, but we are here to expose the truth, to ask key questions about what happened on January 6th, who animated the violence, the extent to which the federal government may have been involved. We know this, January 6th last year wasn't an insurrection. No one has been charged with insurrection. No one has been charged with treason. But it very, very well may have been a fed surrection. We are very concerned that we have sent letter after letter to Attorney General Garland and FBI Director Ray to simply get to the bottom of unexplained circumstances where people are on the FBI most wanted list from January 6th, and then they fall off of that list. Uh, FBI Director Ray was asked under oath before the Congress about the federal assets and agents that were on the ground on January 6th, and he wouldn't provide clear answers. Attorney General Garland was asked in the Judiciary Committee by my colleague Thomas Massey about Ray Epps. He could have cleared up that circumstance and resolved these questions, but he declined to do so. It seems that senior officials in our Justice Department have no problem giving long speeches to try to politically target and smear those they disagree with, but they don't answer the questions that can get to the truth of what really happened on January 6th. I want to credit the reporting at Revolver News for having aggregated a number of the videos that I'm going uh, to go through now that I think uh, continue to ripen these very deep concerns that Congresswoman Green and I have, and, and I would ask you to play the first clip. This is the very last thing that happens before the breach. You've got Ray Epps whispering into this guy's ear, and it's lit. this is the moment of breach. You know, if you were the January 6th committee, wouldn't you want to know what Ray Epps whispered into that individual's ear? And here, this is the moment of breach. Epps, part of the breach squad. So, I mean, this is just the information that has been pieced together by citizens, by small media outlets. Imagine if we actually had the powers of the January 6th committee, the powers of the federal government, to understand why Ray Epps, the evening of the 5th, is out telling people dispassionately, professionally, with laser focus, that the objective is to enter the United States Capitol building. And then on the 6th, it's not the Proud Boys who engage in the initial breach. It's Ray Epps at that precise moment. Now, Ray Epps was originally on the FBI's list of most wanted individuals after uh, the, the initial events on January 6th. But then the day after Revolver News publishes an explosive report about Stuart Rhodes, who's involved with the Oath Keepers, then all of a sudden Ray Epps' name falls off the list. We've sent letters asking questions about that unexplainable circumstance, and the FBI and the Justice Department have given us no illuminating uh, information. But it wasn't just Ray Epps who appears to be on video animating violence this day in the absence of consequence. Please play the next clip. Here you have fence being cut, removed by this individual right here with the backpack. Look, professionally, not whooped up in the crowd, just taking fence down. Now, just moments ago, Congresswoman Green and I went to this specific location outside, 
and we demonstrated how easy it could have been that an individual might have listened to the president's remarks, arrived at the breach site, seen that fencing was removed, and then might have been drawn into a place that they weren't supposed to be and maybe never intended to be. But that individual, the fence cutter that we saw in that last video, nowhere on the FBI's wanted list. No evidence that person's been questioned. January 6th committee doesn't want to talk to them. Why would that person be doing something that so dramatically impacted the acuity of the criminal conduct and then no consequence? But they weren't alone. In an elevated position, on the top of scaffolding that had been set up for the media for observance of that day, we have someone that the Internet has kind of identified as scaffold commander giving persistent instruction to the crowd that had gathered. Play the next clip. And, and the next clip, I believe, is also. image. And it's not like we don't know who this guy is. The very individual who is directing the crowd to fill the Capitol with persistence, with focus, is this person. I, I saw recently that the federal government is engaged in all type of contracting services with facial recognition companies, and you're telling me they can't find this guy in what Attorney General Garland and Director Ray say is the most expansive, the most comprehensive investigation in America's history? Look, there may be a perfectly good explanation for why these individuals, appearing to act in concert of purpose, have had very bizarre lacking in their interaction with the federal government, but we deserve those answers. And, uh, and tens of millions of Americans should not be targeted and smeared and lied about until we get them. Uh, Congresswoman Green and I were not on the grounds this day. We did not speak at the ellipse this day because she and I had a very uh, specific focus for the debate. Uh, Congressman Jordan was preparing to lead a floor effort where different teams would present affidavits and evidence and legal precedent and would review judicial rulings that we thought missed the point of jurisdiction. We were ready to go make those arguments on the floor, on television for all of America to see as part of our objection to electors from states that we did not believe ran clean elections. We wanted to point out the unilateral changes that occurred in election law uh, that we thought were unconstitutional and illegal. And Congresswoman Green and I were working together specifically on the state of Michigan. So we did not show up on January 6th cheerleading for, hoping for any type of violence or disruption. To the contrary, we wanted to follow the constitutional process to be able to make our arguments, and unfortunately, that was the true disruption of what occurred on January 6th. I mean, Joe Biden's certification still occurred on January 6th, but we were deprived of the opportunity to make our argument to the country about election integrity, and that is the very same constitutional process that was contemplated when Jim McGovern, the Democrat chairman of the Rules Committee, literally got up and objected in 2017 to the state of Alabama, a state that Donald Trump won by over 40 points. So when they do it, they're making a principled point, and when we do it, they try to smear us in tens of millions of Americans as insurrectionists. And that's why Marjorie and I are here today, because we did not want the Republican voice to go unheard, and we did not want today's historical narrative to be hijacked and captured by those who were the true insurrectionists. Congresswoman Green. Thank you very much, and I, I think that's an incredible point that, that Congressman Gates just made. It's very important for the Republican voice to go 
to, to be heard today because it's the Republican voice and the Republican voter and the Trump supporter that has been smeared constantly over this past year. I want you all to know that on January 6th, I was very upset with what happened that day, and it was because it completely interrupted the work that we had worked very hard on all throughout Christmas, um, uh, preparing for January 6th to object on behalf of Americans that felt their votes had been stolen. And I think it's important to recognize that our own Federal Election Commission has an error rate by law that is .00. Zero eight percent. And it's important to point out that elections are very serious and they're taken that way by all Americans. Don't forget that Bernie Sanders felt that his election was stolen by Hillary Clinton. Don't forget that Hillary Clinton forgot that her election was stolen. And I'll tell you, being from Georgia, Stacey Abrams still thinks she won in 2018 and she's running again. But here's some things that we do need to discuss you know, I'm one of those people, and I'm not shy to tell you, I don't trust our government. And that's another reason why I ran for Congress is because I felt like it's our government that is screwing thing up, everything up for the American people. But after what we've seen on January 6th and the videos that Congressman Gates just walked through, I can tell you right now I don't trust our government even more. When I, didn't, when I went through the D.C. jail, I'll tell you who I did not see. I did not see Ray Epps. I didn't see him in there wasting away for months on end, being denied his due process rights, being denied the ability to see his family, to get medical treatment, to get a haircut and shave. I didn't see him in there. You know who else I didn't see? I didn't see a man named John Sullivan, a man that has participated in Antifa BLM riots and the whole entire movement, but then all of a sudden decided to be a Trump supporter on January 6th. The same guy that was in the Capitol and filmed Ashley Babbitt's murder and then sold his videos to media outlets. He's not in the D.C. jail under, under Deputy Warden Kathleen Landerkin. So I think we have a lot of questions to ask, and the people that should be answering the questions is our FBI and our Department of Justice. I want to point some things out to you all. With the U.S. Capitol riot, there is over 725 arrests that I know of, and only one case has been dropped. For BLM Antifa riots, there were over 16,240 arrests, and over 90% of those cases have been dropped. What's the difference there, everyone? I'll tell you. For the BLM Antifa riots and violence, the victims were the American people and communities and cities all across our country. But on January 6th, you know who the victim was? It was the Capitol and the members of Congress inside. My question is this. Why is this Congress obsessed with itself and cares nothing about the American people? This is a two-tiered justice system that should never exist in our country, and I'm fed up with it, and so are Americans all over the country. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the FBI. They have quite a history of doing things. Remember, in Governor Whitmer's kidna kidnapping plot, I can tell you that we know there were 12 FBI informants involved in that group, and we don't know how many federal agents were involved. Don't forget about the Bundy Ranch affair, where there were 15 FBI informants involved, and we don't know how many uh, actual agents. But if we can go back further. Another example would be in 1968 at the Democratic National Convention, where there were 10,000 protesters, and one out of six were federal undercover agents. You do the math, and that's approximately 1,600 federal agents at this protest in 1968 at the Democratic National Convention. Here at the Capitol security breach, we don't know how many federal informants, FBI agents, agents of people in other agencies. We don't know those numbers because we have a January 6th committee that is unwilling and refusing to ask those serious questions. Now, what is our FBI doing? And why is the Department of Justice going along with it? And I think the question that really should be asked is, is an informant also involved in making the plans for these types of things and violence and a security breach at the Capitol? Are they just an informant sitting quietly in meetings and listening to plans? Or are they actually taking part in planning these things? I think we can see, and it's very obvious with the videos that we have just seen today, that Ray Epps definitely organized and told people to go in and incited people 
to do the breach of the Capitol, but yet he has not been charged. So there's a lot to be answered for. Now, we have Christopher Ray of the FBI and Merrick Garland of the Department of Justice, who we see are currently going after everyone involved, and they seem to think that this is the biggest investigation that they've ever needed to undertake in United States history. Well, you know what I think needs to be the biggest investigation that ne in United States history is what is going on at the FBI and what is happening in the Department of Justice. And the American people deserve those answers because it's the American people and the taxpayers that pay for all of it. Now, I don't want to have anything to do with a government that is going to be so obsessed with overturning regime change in our own country when it should be serving the American people, protecting their constitutional rights and individual freedoms. Now, that's not something that should divide people by political parties. I think that's something that should bring people together. So I think that going forward with the January 6th committee, when Republicans take back the House, as we all are upset about any type of violence and riots in this country, we should have a January 6th committee that looks for the truth instead of protecting its own and working on its own political goals. And when we talk about elections in our country, we need to make sure that they're safe and no one's vote gets stolen and that ID is shown to vote and that they don't use riots to achieve some sort of legislation. Because if Democrats cared about riots, they would have cared about the Antifa BLM riots all over the country in 2020. They would have worked hard and demanded that they stopped. But instead, they promoted them. And even Ilhan Omar, a member of Congress, and our sitting Vice President Kamala Harris posted bail bond links bailing out rioters so they could go back and do it again on the streets. Now, while Republicans are being attacked and the Democrats are attacking people and calling in uh, with subpoenas, subpoenaing their phone records and banking records, I think it's very important to point out you haven't seen Republicans bailing out rioters as very much matter-of-factly and sadly so. Hardly any Republicans have paid attention to the people that are being held months on end with no one caring about them, their families being left to defend themselves and pay for attorney bills, and they're wasting away in jail. I think due process is extremely important. I think that our pretrial rights are important for every single person that is charged with crimes in our country. And I think it is imperative and it is, it is your responsibility as, as members of the media to call attention to this because it should never happen to anyone and I don't care what their politics are. So with that, I'll, um, we'll take a few questions. Hey, can I ask you, have you, um, did you actually listen? Congresswoman to the President's uh, speech yeah. this morning. And do you acknowledge at a minimum that it's time for reflection, or do you repudiate and reject every single thing that the President said? I think clearly we are reflecting. This is exactly what we're doing today. We are clearly reflecting. As a matter of fact, this is all we reflect on. And again, I'll go back to why don't we reflect on the riots that the American people endured? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, in front of you was first. Go ahead. Oh. Um, so tonight there's a visual at the D.C. jail on behalf of the riders who are in jail. Do either of you plan to go, and if not, why not? Uh, our plan is to be here with you. Uh, our plan earlier today was to travel out to the original breach site and the places where some of these videos were captured, uh, but we do not have plans this evening for that. Yes, ma'am. You said that the victims here uh, at the January 6th attack was lawmakers, and that's why there's so much focus on this attack. But what about the 140 police officers that were injured? Can you tell me a little bit about your reactions when you saw the footage of the, the police officers being assaulted, and if you have any words for them today, a year after uh, the Yeah, attack. I'll say the same thing I've said all year long. I'll say the same thing I said starting that day. It was appalling. And I want to know why the National Guard was not outside the Capitol. I am furious at that. And I want you to know that members of Congress and, and definitely the Speaker of the House, she knew that there was going to be violence that day. President Trump requested the National Guard. So did others. They knew things were going to happen. But for some reason, they thought that optics would look bad if they had the National Guard there. Yes, as a freshman member of Congress, only a few days on the job, yeah, I'm angry the National Guard guard wasn't out there and they left the Capitol Police as sitting ducks to have to to have to deal with all of this and, and completely I would, wrong I would, I would add to that what if those Capitol Police officers are victims 
of people like Ray Epps? Absolutely. What if they're victims of an orchestrated effort by the FBI or other federal law enforcement to increase the criminal acuity of that day? So I would suggest that every officer that was harmed that day mm -hmm. uh, would, would likely be uh, served well by answering these questions that Attorney General Garland and Director Ray refused to answer. What if they were victims uh, of the Absolutely not. I think Senator Cruz is smart enough to know, since he's an attorney, that no one's been charged with terrorism, just like no one has been charged with insurrection. I think that was very irresponsible of him to call them terrorists, and I'm, I, I completely disagree. And uh, the, the establishment will never love you, Ted. You know, you can, uh, you can, you can bend over uh, at, at bended knee for them, uh, but they're, they're just not going to love you. I think that was maybe an effort uh, by the good senator who we agree with on many, many things to, to recast himself in the eyes of, uh, of some of the folks in your profession, but uh, we didn't find it particularly factual or sincere. John? Um, what I heard Senator Cruz say was that he said the Democratic Party wants all Republicans to be seen as terrorists. That's what I heard when I spoke to him. Uh, but I wanted to ask you about uh, the Attorney General. He had a press conference in which said the Justice Department remains committed to holding all January 6th perpetrators at any level accountable under law, whether they were present that day or otherwise criminally responsible for the assault on our democracy. We will follow the facts wherever they leave. What do you make of that press conference, the Attorney General speaking out uh, the day before January 6th? It was very frustrating for me as a member of the Judiciary Committee uh, because the Attorney General wouldn't answer Congressman Thomas Massey's direct question about where the facts and the law led. Uh, you know, we're worried that this might not be a crime so much as it is a cover-up in, in some circumstances as it relates to some people. And it is challenging constitutionally to deal with the fact that you may have had Department of Justice and FBI assets and informants really increasing the degree of, of criminality on this day uh, and who's supposed to look into them? Well, the Congress is. And there was likely a time, John, when I believed that the Republicans should disband this January 6th committee the moment we take power after the 2022 elections. But increasingly, I'm of the view that we have to convert it to a proper purpose to follow the facts in the law when the Department of Justice uh, has not been forthcoming f when members of Congress have asked questions under oath. Mr. Gage, do you think there would have been no riot if there hadn't been federal somehow involved in the crowd? Is that that is the that operative question. And if you note, I would point you to, I, I, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I would point to the video that we just showed. I would say, yeah. say take these videos and present them to the, t to the skeptics and show them Ray Epps at the moment of breach. There was no pr breach prior to the video that I showed you, that initial video. And so at the moment of breach, you have Epps instigating, pushing, directing, describing exactly what should happen. Uh, I think that the question you asked is the operative question, and unfortunately the January 6th committee seems to be focused on everything else. You're saying the federal government caused the riot at the time? I, am not, I, I do not yeah. believe that there would have been the same level of criminal acuity on January 6th of last year, but for the involvement of the federal government. I don't think there would have been a kidnapping plot of Governor Whitmer without the involvement of the federal government. And increasingly we are starting to see pattern recognition where the federal government inserts themselves into these organizations through assets, informants, at times possibly agents, and then those people become not spectators or witnesses to those events, but they become the very animators of those events. That seems to be precisely the evidence that I just showed you regarding Ray Epps. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let's let everybody get one before we go back. Yes. Just to zoom out on our first question, your theory of the case is that Donald Trump actually won the election, the federal government organized a breach of the Capitol to disrupt the results being challenged on January 6th. Is oh, I, I, I think you've, you've imputed a, a motive that I think we still have to investigate. Remember, yeah. what Congresswoman Green and I are calling for is for Republicans to take power and utilize the January 6th co uh, committee to answer those questions as to motive. What, what I find very circumspect is in the face of this direct captured evidence and when presented with direct questions under oath, we get obfuscation from the Attorney General and the FBI Director. That is very suspicious to us. We're not ready to try and convict anyone, but these are the operative questions, not whether or not there were coup plotters who wanted to formulate an argument for the floor of the House. But, but, that's, but, but you know, if you're a lawyer, that's your working theory of the case, that as you said, you had these 
plans to offer up objections, and they all got disrupted because the federal government sent in. Uh, well, there could be an alternate motive. The motive of the federal government may not have been to disrupt that debate, but to ensnare, target, and trash a political movement. You know, we saw during the civil rights era the Department of Justice, the FBI, uh, insert themselves into the people around civil rights leaders that they were concerned about, that they thought were agitators, that they thought were communists. And then we saw those actions of some of those federal assets increase uh, suspicion and basis for investigation. During the Russia hoax, we saw you know, the, the uh, FBI not as a victim of, of lying Russians, but actually ceding those lies to justify their own action. And, and, you, and you see that through the spoken indictments of Durham. So this wasn't a one-off on January 6th. As Congresswoman Green laid out and as I've just laid out, we believe there's a pattern and practice where assets, agents, and informants of the federal government are central to the criminal activity. And but for their involvement, that, that activity would have been at, at a minimum at a lower acuity. Yeah, yes. What do you make of the fact that so few of the fellow Republicans are in D.C. today? I can't answer for them. And I, I think it's important to let them answer that question themselves. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Republicans don't seem to want to go uh, go into the truth like like Congressman Gates and I are. Um, we we will not stand here and be lied about, and that's what's happening. We're watching it all over the news today, and we've seen it for the past year. Um, I'm not one that's going to just sit there and take and you know duck and hide under cover uh, when the mainstream media and and the Democrat Party wants to label people and and tell lies about us. I'm, we're, gonna, we're here because we want to get out in front and say we think there's real questions that do need to be asked. Another thing is, is I'll never answer for someone else's motive uh, on what they did on January 6th because I have no idea. Um, the only thing that we cared about and wor were working on, again, was uh, looking into election fraud. And we were objecting and, and wor had worked very hard on the state of Michigan on behalf of those people that had signed their names at risk of perjuring themselves uh, over what they had said they'd seen election fraud. I think that's extremely important. Um, so as far as anyone's motive, and we're not going to defend people that broke laws on January 6th. I certainly don't want to do that. I, I don't like any riots, and I don't care what, what they're for. Um, what I want to know is, was our government involved, and why? Why on earth would they do that? And if so, there's something that needs to be done about yes, it. Yes, sir, in the back. Um, now that so many audits and other checks have been done, do you acknowledge that uh, Joe Biden won the election and is the legitimate president? You want to know something? I've introduced four different sets of articles of impeachment. I think it's very clear that I think Joe Biden is the president. I mean, if I'm trying to impeach him, I think it's clear that I think he's the president. Yes, his, he was on January 6th. His electoral college votes were confirmed and he was sworn in. Uh, later on in January. I think that's a silly question to ask. Yeah. What do you think of President Biden's new direct tone today in his speech, putting blame directly on Mr. Trump for January 6th? Well, he didn't even say his name. When I blame people, I typically use their name, so I'd probably reject the premise of the question. But following on from that, that, that metaphor that he used, that uh, Donald Trump and his supporters, by implication, were holding a dagger to the throat of American democracy, what was your reaction to that? Ludicrous. Uh, you know, we, we, we are here uh, to vindicate our democracy, to ensure that people in the national security apparatus don't delegitimize, target, mm -hmm. abuse, and torture an entire political movement of tens of millions of Americans. I also don't think it was a particularly new tone. It sort of seemed like uh, the normal speech in decline for a, a man in decline. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, yes, ma'am. Are you worried that there are people who don't understand the severity of what happened as far as the violence on that oh, well, day? We're, we're worried there are a lot of folks who don't understand the severity of what happened, particularly if it was so severe that it was being animated and encouraged by assets of the federal government. That would be a far greater scandal than anything that the Democrats have talked about or even that other Republicans have talked about. Congresswoman Green and I have acknowledged from the very beginning of this day to our, our time out at the breach site that we oppose violence, mm -hmm. that this was a violent day, that it was not a good day, it is not a day we are celebrating, and we condemn political violence in, in all of its forms, full stop. So what is your message to the people that say, well, January 6th, people just walked into the Capitol and took a, a look around? 
I say we need to release the over 14,000 hours of videotape that the American taxpayers pay for. You know who pays for this building? The American taxpayers. They pay for those video surveillance cameras, and they own the footage. If there's nothing to hide, release it. I, we have constantly called for it to be released. We should release all of that video, and then America can judge, America can judge for themselves. But another thing is I think we need to remember the, the violent riots and the over 16,000 uh, p- charges for the Antifa and BLM riots. Again, why don't riots against American citizens matter, but yet the riot on January 6th is the only thing that, that just reigns the discussion? Here's something for you all. What if the FBI was involved? What if Ray Epps and, and what he was doing and this man that was on the scaffolding and John Sullivan and other bad actors like them, what if that caused a member of the press to get killed? What would you all be saying about that? So what, how, what kind of responsibility would you be placing on the FBI or any kind of other federal agency if a member of the press had been killed that day because of violence that they had, had caused to action? I mean, I think this is a, this is a serious question. You all work here every single day just like we do. You walk these halls. This is, this is the place where you, you gather information and, and do your job. So your safety was also at risk that day too. And if our federal government was involved in doing so, I think that's something that you should be very upset about. Congressman Turnhouse, do you believe that the man who just got five years for throwing a fire extinguisher at a police officer was an undercover federal agent? The, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're not familiar with that particular case. Well, it's one of, one of the cases that's just been settled. Five but years for throwing the fire extinguisher. For throwing a fire extinguisher? Yeah, we're, we're not, we're not I, here I'm, to I'm litigate any particular cases. case. Yes. We're no one's lawyer. We're no one's advocate. We're here to speak to the conditions that, that existed on that day, to the, to the civil rights of people who have been deprived access to medical care, religious services, but we're not going to get into the facts of any one particular yeah. defendant. Um, you know, we have brought video evidence to display to you in the world, and we think that those, those are the specific cases that, that would probably warrant the, the most thorough fact. review. Yes, well, right, yes, I, that's what I'm showing you, but, but you're here talking about, about a case that, I don't, that, I'm that we were involved with in it. adjudicating. Yes. If Republicans take back the House, what kind of investigations might you launch involving this or any other sort of related issues? Well, we're going to encourage Republican leadership to utilize the January 6th committee correctly to answer the questions regarding potential federal involvement. That, that goes to the top of the list. Um, I am also heartened that Congressman Jim Jordan has publicly committed to starting an oversight and investigation subcommittee of the House Judiciary Committee, and I believe that uh, that, that could foster some very productive work regarding what's happening at the FBI and DOJ and, and perhaps other federal entities that, that were involved on that day. Yes, sir. You briefly mentioned uh, Stuart Rhodes, the leader of the Oath Keepers. What is your current opinion of the Oath Keepers and their role in the breach? I think it's something that, that warrants a good deal of review, but it's very suspicious to us that Stuart Rhodes is sort of like the Forrest Gump of a lot of these operations. He, he appears in strange circumstances, uh, is involved in organizing activity, and then seems to always uh, escape any specific charge or accountability. And it, it beckons the question whether or not Stuart Rhodes is in fact a federal asset or informant. And we would like a direct answer to that question. I mean, Ray Epps and Stuart Rhodes were part of the same organization. The Epps video is very compelling, and we think the Rhodes case uh, is also uh, warranting a further inquiry. Uh, yes, sir, Brian? As we sit here right now, what is the next step for the January 6th detainees? Is what's the, what does the future look like for those guys? Well, I, again, I encourage everyone to go to green.house.gov. Green has an E on the end. That, that is where you can read the D.C. jail report that we worked very hard to get the information out on what's happening and how these people's due process rights are being violated. Uh, but it's also about the entire D.C. jail. The D.C. jail has quite a history uh, of being just a, a terrible place, treating prisoners badly. Um, well before January 6, pretrial detainees or, or defendants are being held there. Um, going forward, no one is defending these people. They, they are languishing in jail. Uh, they're awaiting their trials. Many of their trials are much later on. So unfortunately, it's, it's, a, very, it's a very sad case until more attention is being drawn to it and, and, and until more people care uh, to step in and help. And I really honestly hope they do. What do you say to those who say that these 
charges further conspiracy theories about the, the FBI being involved, that you've been spreading about the, the, um, the election I, 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 in order to fundraise and money? Because you both have... Well, I mean, I, I, I'm... I'm familiar with You mean with like being, Russian collusion? Yeah, I'm familiar with being <laughs> called a conspiracy theorist because when I got here in 2017 and in 2018, when I was making the claim oftentimes alone that it wasn't Trump colluding with Russia, it was in fact the Clinton apparatus and the DNC that was colluding with Russians to tell lies about Trump. Oh, everybody said I was a big conspiracy theorist then, but now we're starting to see through the Durham indictments that that is precisely what happened. So kind of the arc of the D.C. narrative is first you all call me a conspiracy theorist, and then months and years later, these things turn out to be true. Because I expected that criticism, we brought evidence. We brought video. And I would say, send it to the critics. Send it to all the folks who produce mm -hmm. the mainstream media primetime shows. You know, they want to run a whole lot of video from January 6th, but I'm, I'm willing to bet you won't see these videos run on primetime, and they should be, because it shows the American people that there was a lot more going on, and that the game you're watching is not the game being played. We'll do one, we'll do one more question. And then, uh, and then he had his hand up. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, I have a question about President Trump. So you all are making the case here that, in your words, this was a, a Fed insurrection, some sort of federally instigated event. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I know, that is not the case that President Trump himself makes about this. He, you know, sees this as an outpouring of support from his followers and says that the real insurrection was on November 3rd. I, I haven't seen him make the argument that this was some sort of federally instigated thing. Well, so. We're not only limited to the arguments that former President Trump makes. We're, we're entitled to make well, our own our arguments. Our own arguments, yes. Why do they believe you and not former President Trump? Believe the evidence. I, I don't think it's one or the other. I, I think that's the wrong premise to take here. You know, um, we were both really looking forward to President Trump's press conference tonight. Uh, unfortunately, I think he got some bad advice in canceling it. Uh, we wish that he had, he had done that so that people could have asked him these questions. But just like Congressman Gates just said, uh, as members of Congress and representatives, we, we are going to be asking our own, own questions, and we don't have to fall in line behind anyone in the types of questions we're asking. Yeah. Uh, we don't talk I about talk our uh, conversations with the president with you guys in yep. any circumstance. Yep. You ready? Thank, thank, thank you, guys. everyone. Thank you.